Hi, and welcome to my life in sunny Central Texas. Uh, it's doggy time, so I'm outside. And he likes that. Let me get this turned off. I have been listening to podcasts on various channels, as usual. Oh, somebody's working on something and it sounds a little bit squeaky. That ain't a good sound. Alright, 30 minute drive video. I'm more like 35. There he is. Someone's going to his dad's for the weekend. And that's okay. He'll be glad to get back because I'm the one that feeds him steak. I feed both of them steak. My daughter, too, when she'll accept it. Got water with electrolytes. I am personally full of darn good ribeye. I fed a teenager a ribeye a little while ago. And he still poured himself a bowl of uh, animal crackers and put milk on them and ate them like cereal a little while ago. Crazy youngsters. Right now he thinks he's 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Actually, he thinks he's 9 feet tall and 10 inches. It's the, the younger one, the little boy, that thinks he's 10 feet tall. He's more like 6'2", I think. But that's good. It means at some point they ate some meals they should have ate. I wish more people would eat what they should eat. And if they need, it, if they need ideas... There are so many encouraging and helpful people in the comment section on all the carnivore videos. If you can tolerate dairy, we will give you ideas, things to do with your cheese and your cream. My daughter puts cheese in the smoker. Cream cheese even. Tim Johnson said, that's a Nordic spelling too, so there's an A, not an O, N, S, I don't know if it's two S's or what, but Pim, she's in the videos that I follow, and she is Professor Bart Kay's, um, partner, roommate, Partner in crime. Uh, <laughs> she's cool and she's smart. That's what matters. Let's turn this around. I want some more lowering sun in my face than behind me. Uh, okay. You stand up here, puppy. Are you gonna go down some more? Uh, whatever. Yep. More engine noise. If they read that red light in that thing enough, it won't matter how much work they do, it'll still be Not fit to be used. I 
I know a lot of people who fix things like that. Let's push this up here. No, that red line does not indicate where you should try to get it while you're working on it. If it's not working, maybe you just want to get it to where it's running. It's not a race car. Don't spend all your time redlining it. In fact, it's a small, slightly beat up truck. Is that what you're worried about, puppy? Is the dog unhappy over there? I can hear the arp, arp, arp. It's okay, baby. You don't have to worry about it. I don't know how long he's going to want to stay out. <laughs> my ring is here. I can feel it. My hair keeps coming into my, out, into my face because the wind is moving this way. It's coming behind my shoulder and kind of whipping around a little bit. Now today, I received my two-roll package and I ordered more. I don't like running out of my seminar. I have also spotted some very tiny, super fine uh, spider webbing. I keep kind of brushing it up with this. Ooh, I may have, I may have another little tiny spider. And as long as it isn't some poisonous breed, it can stay. If it's a wolf spider, I like that. That kind is aggressive towards other spiders. And they hunt, they actively hunt brown recluse and black widows. And those are things you don't want around your house. So if there's a wolf spider growing up on one of my plants, I will leave it. It's hot and sweaty out here. And that's okay. Some of my last little bits of eczema seem to be doing better. And I would dearly love for them to go away completely. And it's been hot and muggy, so I anticipate mosquito bites will be a thing all weekend. Not just for me, but it'll include me because I prefer to dress as lightly as possible when the temperatures get close to or over 100. That's okay. I need some UV on my skin. I need some fresh air, and it actually is, in that regard, this beautiful day. I don't smell agricultural chemicals happening, which means that the person who sprays all the nearest fields has not been overspraying and getting it all over this residential neighborhood. And it's possible to watch them do it. 
because basically the farmers want to make sure that their fields are not under sprayed. Oh, puppy. Yeah. People who put down a lot of chemicals, either for agricultural use or for you know, yard use or whatever. Now, a big part of the reason why I keep this guy so close. Yeah, that's a spot in there. He doesn't need to go potty or someone has been poisoning fire ants. I've got a weed torch. If I find fire ants in the yard, I'm going to kill it with fire. And I have pulled goat heads and other forms of tiny stickers out of his fur enough times. I'll kill those with fire too. Yeah, well, puppy. You gotta protect the puppy. Oh, you want over there? I can move the headset. Yeah, this plastic ice chest is a lot cooler to sit on than the decking right now, isn't it? Put all the plants that have live stuff down here where they're somewhat sheltered from the sun because it's just brutal in the afternoon. But it looks like I've got one more, possibly more. I've got an additional little basil sprout. Again, it's not something I'm going to eat. I don't eat a lot of pesto these days. But Moose eats it. I should look at one of these up here. I just put some seeds in it recently. Oh, yeah. More spider web to pick up just in case I can pick up a spider. Get a spider on one of those pot, little pots and I'll look for a spider for the other one. Biodiversity. Wherever it is food for something, either it is also food for something else, or what's coming to it will be food for something else. There is no life without something being consumed. No rain today so far. Unless you count the sweat that's dripping off of me. But a few minutes out here is a good thing. Are you done, puppy dog? You still staring at You want to go play with that beagle pup so bad, don't you? A beagle would probably be a safe friend. Because you're not a fox and you don't look remotely like a fox. Or a raccoon or possum. But that big guy over there would only have to play rough one time before I would have no chihuahua. Not that I don't like big dogs. Is that 
most big dogs suffer from the same lack of training that small dogs do. This guy is pretty good. I'll start scolding before I start calling because that gives him a chance to do what he should do. To let him choose it. When or if that doesn't work, then I actually call him. Oh, I might have a tiny spider on the very small blueberry shrub. Which would make sense because it has lost a great deal of leaves. And I can hear the howling from the backyard breeder across the way. They're not across the block, they're around the corner and just over a little tiny bit. And rather than doing the typical backyard breeder and concentrating on small, high dollar, cutesy cute things that they can get more of into a small area, they're doing big old German Shepherd dogs. I like German Shepherds, I really do. I like them better if they're trained, adequately housed so that they're happy. And reasonably well behaved. Their dogs will frequently get out and roam the neighborhood. A happy dog does not want to lose its way and if it gets out it will sit on the front step waiting for you because it wants to see you that badly. And it won't make that sound either. I've got one friend who is quite insistent that if he did have a dog, it would not be allowed in the house during mealtimes for fear of it taking food away from small children or getting in a bad habit of begging. But the fact is that we can follow anthropological studies back over the course of all of human history and a little bit of pre-human, the hominids, you know, the Stone Age man that were basically humans, but we don't call them that because I don't know why. They were basically human. But uh, one of the most important things in in human history is sharing food and taking care of each other. Which is why hunting and gathering were not decisions people made for themselves and their mate and children. It was something the whole of the tribe, the whole clan, Whoever, whatever they called themselves, you know, they worked together and everybody did it. If it was the time of year when fishing or tidal pools were more productive, they would all go to whatever their coastal option was and gorge on fish. And if it was a time of year when the caribou came close, then they would all go make a camp close to the hunting grounds where those who were good at throwing spears and javelins or whatever you hunt caribou with would go out and get some. And when they got some, they'd bring it back to camp and everybody would gorge on caribou. Same for the elk, the moose, the venison, the seals, and people don't like to think about it, oh no, this cute baby, whatever. No, people had to eat. If they didn't eat, you might not be here today. 
and meat outside of a few very specific conditions is not what people have the worst allergies to. I've got two food allergies and neither one of them is meat. I get sensitive to eggs depending on what the chickens have been fed. Sometimes I don't do well with pork depending how it has been handled or what the pork was eating. What puppy? You need to go potty some more? It's doggy time. You can go down if you want. Now just because we've adapted over a great many centuries to do well with alternative foods, I don't believe it means that we have to eat those alternative foods. As Dr. Barry and some others have stated, that was what you use if But those alternatives were what you ate, you know, tubers, berries, what have you. If for some reason the caribou didn't come around, or if the elk herd or the bison herd was demolished by a freak late winter storm, or, you know, if you got done eating all the the giant ground sloths or or the last mammoth has been hunted to extinction because those are things we have eaten not me personally i'm not quite that old my dad once had my my baby sister and one of her friends convinced that uh, he used to steal hubcaps off dinosaurs <laughs> But they were like four at the time, so. And one little child just so disturbed by this mental image that she looked up and told him it's not nice to steal. <laughs> one almost might think he's got a sense of humor. And sometimes it's fun to tell on him. How you doing, puppy? What's my counter at? 23 minutes. I think I need to go in and do the dishes. Drink some more of my water, things like that. I have gathered up some tiny spider webs on the little avocado seedling as if it were a, a feather duster or something. There is a tiny bit of a web on one plant. And if I have accidentally gathered up more than one spider, maybe one of them will move over onto the basil or the little citrus. If the citrus will grow, I have got the supplies to make it make roots in a little plastic ball that you tie off to something and support. Basically, you put some potting mix First, you, you scrape the bark wherever you want to um, create a clone, basically. And you put a little hormone powder on it to make it, to encourage it to create roots. And then you close the little plastic ball with the potting soil on it. Wrap some plastic wrap or tape or something. Put a stick to support it if you need to or tape it to the wall. Anything you can so that this poor beleaguered damaged plant doesn't have to support this little pocket full of dirt and slowly developing roots. And you just let it make roots for a little while. And then you cut it off below the ball. 
open it up. And if you decide you cut it too soon and you want to just keep protecting it, let it make roots, let it make more roots, close the ball back up, or give it a sprinkling of water and then close it up. And put it upright somewhere so it will be encouraged to grow upright. And if the if the avocado ever branches so that I can take a cutting from it or the citrus, I can do that. With the blueberries I should be able to. I probably want to try to get two from the newer plant because it did produce a lot of berries. And if I can get that to work, then I'll have my skill set improved when it comes to handling the plants. And I can do the other one that had the one berry that tasted so amazing. With basil, I just have to um, let it grow to the point that some of it produces seed and keep the seed. Depending how much pesto is needed this, this fall or whenever it's worth cutting. It sure smells good. Smells like Italian food. Of course, if I grew basil and it smelled like Russian food, I might be concerned, but it doesn't. Speaking of which, I haven't had pierogies in so long. I don't think there's any Russian in my lineage. But I kind of miss pierogies with cheese in, in the potatoes. They're kind of carby. That might be why I haven't been eating any pierogies. I like blintzes too, but they're kind of sugary. You ready to go in, puppy? It's hot out here. Uh, he's got to stand there smelling the breeze for a couple more minutes. You know, if you're used to gardening and growing certain things, and you're good at it, you might as well do it, even if you aren't going to eat it. If your church runs a charity pantry, or if there are seniors at your church who live by themselves and maybe bemoan the fact that they no longer have the energy to keep up a garden to grow themselves some tomatoes or some fruit or whatever it is, maybe you could bring them a potted apple tree or big box loaded up with tomatoes and cucumbers and whatever. But encourage each other, help each other, pray for each other if you're inclined at all to pray. The encouragement is a big thing. I was cruising comments under a video today and found yet another person needing encouraged. Just needed to know how to start. And some of us got in there and said it. Start slowly. Because going fast is often a disaster for the guts. Even my glasses back on. 
Need my glasses wiped. And also, somebody with the same person who was saying, How do I start? And we all said, Increase your meat. I also said, Don't replace the potatoes, rice, and packaged goods as you run out of them. In fact, with packaged goods, take them to the nearest food bank. If they're not damaged, Somebody somewhere will find them to be a blessing. <sighs> yeah, honey. He's so oh, leave the kitty alone. No kitty. No kitty. That's not our kitty. You're also not going over there where that puppy's complaining. He's got people. His people should take care of him. Okay, I've been sitting out here for a little while. I can feel my hair sticking to sweat on my neck and shoulders. I'll get out of the sun first. You ready to go in? Okay, yeah, I've said the important things. One of the most important is Grandma loves you and wants you to be okay. But you can include the help each other, pray for each other, and all of that, because that's important too. Bye-bye.